Looking at a recap of 2023 compared to the average, it shows why folks shouldn't let their guard down. Only one major hurricane and two tropical storms affected the U.S. last year, and Major Hurricane Lee, the biggest storm of the season, managed to stay just off the U.S. coast. Many, saying meteorologists, cried wolf. Well, 2023 was the fourth most active season on record. An early forecast called for a near normal season, but updated forecasts in May and June pushed those numbers higher. El Nino kicking in late in the season, inhibiting most tropical development. And after Hurricane Lee, no systems were stronger than a Category 2, and all but Ophelia stayed well in the Atlantic. At the same time, the waters over the Atlantic Basin were at all-time records. So let's look at this year's forecasts. A team at Colorado State University led by Dr. Philip Klotzbach has really been the go-to for early season forecasts for decades. But there are several others and their forecasts are coming out in the next few weeks. In an unprecedented move, CSU is putting out numbers never seen before in early forecasts. They're forecasting 23 named storms with 11 of those becoming hurricanes and five of those being category three or stronger. The basic thinking is waters are already at or near record warmth. El Nino is showing signs of fading, and if La Nina kicks in, storms may have an easier time developing. Just those two global factors push those numbers higher, but some of the early forecast numbers are almost double the average. Looking at the water temperatures, 2023 was a record-breaking year. It's the one marked in orange. 2024 has been exceeding those numbers all year. Below are all of the numbers since 1981. The top and bottom dotted lines are the outside average, and the middle dotted line is the 30-year mean average. All of the lines outside of that range are from the years since 2015, a startling trend of warmer waters over the last decade. Since tropical systems need water of at least 80 degrees to survive, almost the entire Atlantic Basin is meeting that standard now, and we're not even in June. Because of this, the number of storms would likely be higher. Scientists are familiar with what's called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. Waters off the South American coast in the Pacific Ocean, warm and cool. While the waters are warmer than average, it's called El Nino, and when it's cooler than average, it's called La Nina. This event is known to cause dramatic weather shifts in different parts of the world, including the tropics. Right now, we're still in an El Nino cycle, but it's shifting back to La Nina and maybe a moderate La Nina near the peak of the hurricane season. When El Nino is in place, the winds at the upper levels tend to be stronger over the tropical development zone. Tropical systems need light winds in order to develop properly. If the winds are too strong, the stacking of the low pressure center can get offset or blown off completely, either weakening, killing, or preventing a system from strengthening into a full-blown hurricane. Powerful hurricanes are vertically stacked, and that's why you can see right down to the surface through the eye. La Nina, on the other hand, lightens those winds in the development zone. Storms develop easier, they strengthen with little resistance, and that vertically stacked engine can get more efficient. Since all indications are that we're transitioning to La Nina, there's a better chance more storms will survive the development phase, therefore increasing the chance that a larger number of systems will get going. Now there are several factors that go into these hurricane season forecasts. At least they let us know if a season's going to be above normal or below normal. Will we actually hit 23 named storms? That's not so likely, but it does give forecasters and emergency planners a heads up that this is the season we need to prepare for. Unfortunately, this early in the game, we can't tell you where or when a hurricane is going to strike a particular location. But there are some indicators that the United States may be in for more tropical systems making landfall here. Much of this depends on where the summer Bermuda High sits. If it's closer to the U.S. coast and somewhat south, storms are guided toward the Caribbean and the Gulf Coast. If it remains farther offshore, then the East Coast is threatened. Last year it was very far and much of the activity stayed over the Atlantic. But the sheer number of storms expected is what really pushes the chances of a land-falling tropical system higher. Obviously, the more balls you have to swing at, the better chance that you're going to hit one. The more storms that are out there, the better chance they have of striking our coasts. 
CSU's team is saying that for much of the U.S. coastline has a 20% higher than normal chance of seeing a landfall. For Louisiana, they're thinking that it's almost certain we'll get a tropical storm and a better than 50-50 chance that a hurricane will come and a nearly 25% chance that a Category 3 or higher storm will impact us which is concerning because since 2020, we've had four major hurricanes strike the coast or at least was a major hurricane shortly before arrival. Much of the infrastructure is still compromised in southwest and southeast Louisiana. But of course I worry the most about our home, Acadiana. We've had so many near misses over the past several years and we all know that one day our card is going to get pulled. That's why you need to have your stuff together now. You also need to have a plan in place whether you decide to stay and ride out the storm or evacuate to a safer place. But always keep in the back of your mind, as we've seen already in southwest and southeastern Louisiana, there's a possibility that life could be disrupted so much that it may be some time before we can return home.